Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase episode of Who the Hell Asked. Byron and Slade here, and, uh, yeah, this is way better than Summer Game Fest. <laughs> Spoilers! Spoilers, indeed. Uh, yeah, so, honestly, that was probably the best, uh, showcase I've seen for Microsoft, possibly ever, only mired by the narrator going apeshit through the second half of the presentation. But outside of that, you know, people complained where are the games? So then they proceeded to show off 90 plus minutes of games that are coming out within the next 12 months, which is honestly really incredible yeah uh and speaking of where's the games let's start with what not what they started with but the second thing they started with we got it we got it slade you've been clamoring for it for months for years and it it's at the xbox event that being it hollow Knight song. it lives it lives it lives alive <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. So Hollow Knight Silk Song was showed off to uh, everybody's surprise. Um, yeah. When I first saw this, I have in my notes, when I first saw this, I didn't believe it was Silk Song. <laughs> I was like, oh, Hollow Knight's coming to Game Pass. Dumb me. Hollow Knight probably was on Xbox already. And, yeah. And it was like when they when they showed the logo, it was like, OK, holy fuck. It's actually here. It's not at the Nintendo event. Which I think shocked people even more. Because you would have figured Silk Song would be at the Nintendo event, not a Microsoft event. I wasn't try I wasn't picky about which kind of event it was gonna appear at, so much as when is it going to appear? <laughs> when. And I figured it was gonna pick a time where everybody was watching and whatnot. But uh we still have no official release date, but we do have a very interesting set of tweets from uh, Microsoft that I'm sure Byron's putting on screen right now. Uh, yeah, that's right. So Microsoft, uh, so remember what Slade said earlier with the every game shown here is going to be coming out within the next 12 months. Microsoft on the, the Xbox Twitter account confirmed that. Confirmed that. So by June... Of next year, by this time next year, Hollow Knight Silk Song, uh, Silk Song should be in people's hands and fingertips. Which is absolutely awesome. I know uh, a lot of people are speculating, oh, we saw you know some really good gameplay. That means the game's probably going to be out within the next few months, right? Well, not exactly. Because um, one, we are, we've already had Silk Song gameplay for like the last three years, so... That means nothing. Uh, the fact that uh, they didn't actually include a date with this trailer tells me it's probably further out than it would be closer to release. Hashtag so. 2023. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely joining, uh, in my opinion, that stacked lineup of 2023 my, games. My, my God, and that's, that's going to be a, a number you see a lot of today. Uh-oh. And speaking of things, uh, we saw a lot of we saw a lot of shooters, but none the weirder than "High on Life" by the fine folks over at Rick and Morty. A gr weirdly gross-looking first-person shooter. I think it, that's what they were going for, though. Yeah, where the guns are like literally chatting you up. Yeah, and, and uh, they sounded like oh god, I don't. They kind of sound like uh, Rick, I think, is the name of the character from Rick and Morty. I think you'd be right. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's actually coming this year. <laughs> that's actually coming uh, this year. And speaking of things coming this year, we got another big announcement. Riot Games is coming to Game Pass this winter. With a yeah, whole so... bunch of stuff. So the crazy thing about this is, well, these are all free-to-play games, right? Yeah. But by having Game Pass, you're going to get access to all of the paid content in terms of, like, characters and decks and whatnot. Yeah, so 
Yeah, so in League of Legends and League of Legends Wild Rift, you will get all the champions in Valorant. You will get all the agents. In Legends of Runeterra, you will get the foundation set. And in Teamfight Tactics, you will get select little legends unlocked. That All of that will be coming to Game Pass this winter, which is huge. Now, let me explain why that's actually a really, really big deal. So let's like, talk about League of Legends, for instance. A lot of these champions, when they come out, have about, I want to say, a $6 price tag attached to them. Yeah. And uh, this is just on average. Some of them actually cost, like, damn near 20 and some cost, Jesus like, less Jesus fuck, than I didn't know that. I don't know League, so... So, League has a total of, I want to say, around 160 champions. What the Everything fuck? Everything is $6 each. You would literally be saving over a thousand dollars if you wanted every champion in the entire game if you had game pass yeah which at, is at least you're not spending just much. league we're not talking about tft we're not talking about legends root of terror or valorant that is a borderline crazy like deal yeah and people thought the ga that game pass was was an illegal deal <laughs> yeah so um, like as soon as I saw that, I'm like, there's no way Riot Games would agree to that fucking kind of monetization. They probably got the bag for that one. <laughs> yeah, they had to, uh, which is crazy. Do, do so, you think this means anything, uh, to, to speculate a little bit, do you think this means anything for Riot's upcoming platform fighter? Uh, Potentially, especially if it's going to have a similar model to multiverses. Mm-hmm. Of course, then our favorite I game to cover. <laughs> yeah, and I imagine it would. I think this is more telling along the lines of what we might see for uh, other games like Heroes of the Storm. It's like a League of Legends copy that okay. uh, Act of Blizzard owns. Which oh, yeah, Act of Blizzard. We'll get into them later. <laughs> but, uh, no, that is absolutely absurd. And... Uh, Fantastic news for anybody who loves, you know, any Riot Games products. Yeah, so, yeah, we got uh, more stuff for Forza Motorsport. Seems like a Forza game is coming out every, like, six months or something. <laughs> Cause it feels Honestly, like... it does feel like it. Yeah. I'm surprised but, uh... they have the, like, time to make the photorealism, like, run as good and smooth as it does, considering these games feel like they come out yearly. Yeah, because the, the new stuff in Forza Motorsport, we have uh, dynamic time of day and seasons, ray tracing, so, like, trees and other cars will be, like, really reflected on your cars. And then, of course, uh, something that I don't believe Gran Turismo has, car damage. <laughs> yeah. Which is interesting. Like, they were like, oh, yeah, the paint chip details i'm like it looked great but it's just so funny they're like oh yeah you could see the directions of the the scratches on the paint and the paint peeling <laughs> uh, but we'll get into some funnier forza stuff a little Speaking bit of later. uh kind of photo of realistic uh experiences microsoft microsoft flight simulator that's right. Got it's... a new vehicle update showcase. Yep. Including oh. the Pelican from Halo. That's and right. And there will be That's... more Halo themed vehicles coming. That's right. So, yeah. First, the Halo stuff, I'm like, no fucking way. Is the. I thought the Halo world itself was coming to Microsoft Flight Simulator. <laughs> I thought that was actually kind of crazy. Yeah, but it's still crazy. They even had, like, because Microsoft Flight Sim, for those who don't know, it's all about realism. Like, for the 40th anniversary pack, it's like, there's like a whole bunch of like, of the old, like, first airplanes coming to to it. And then it's like, oh yeah, the Pelican from Halo Infinite. <laughs> but yeah, and apparently you can go to space with it. <laughs> so if you ever wanted to, to fly to your house with the Halo Pelican... Now you can, Slade. I don't know if you plan to do that, but... <laughs> but you can do that now. All right. So, so, we... so we got ahead. Overwatch 2. Yeah. Early access. 
uh, will be October 4th. And uh, apparently we also got, like, a new hero? <laughs> or uh, I, the I Joker think Queen. Did? She's a character that they featured a lot on there. It is what it is. It doesn't look like Overwatch 2 is bringing a terrible lot of new things to the table yeah. that Overwatch 1 doesn't have. So Yeah, we still haven't even seen the what the PvE element is going to be. And that's the thing that makes Overwatch 2 Overwatch 2. <laughs> Yeah, so I guess only time's gonna tell on that front. Speaking of uh, things time will tell, time will tell the t the tale of Fallout 76 and how Bethesda just will not let this game go. Yeah, which I think is wild because what they're doing is they're just grabbing uh, Fallout 3 DLC and slapping it onto... 76. Yeah, so we so we got a little bit of a of a of a mini Bethesda segment and for Fallout's I think it's 25th or 20th anniversary, something like that. Uh we get the pit as Fallout 76 DLC. Yeah. So anybody who's played Fallout 3 DL and its DLC will know the about the pit, super fun iconic location. Yep. Uh, a lot speak, of stuff to do there. Speaking of things that are fun and iconic, Slade. Hot Wheels is coming to Forza Horizon 5. <laughs> yeah, which I thought was really cool, actually. I'm surprised yes. they didn't put these announcements next to each other. I'm, yeah, I'm a little surprised we didn't get the Forza announcements next to each other. But yeah, like, it actually looked so good. Because <laughs> uh, when I saw, like, for, okay, I'm like, oh, well, more Forza? And then I saw the orange tracks. And you know, the moment you see the orange tracks, it's Hot Wheels. Oh I'm yeah! Like, Holy shit! You're going through like a, you're like racing at least the track they showed in the trailer. You're racing in a volcano, or some shit like that. And it was, I'm like, oh man, why, why can't we get more games just like that in general? Not just having it be DLC. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, but yeah. So uh, for those who have been following Arc Two. It got another trailer, and finally, it's dated to release in 2023, which I don't think, uh, I'm pretty sure that was an announced delay from, uh, last year. Yeah. When it said it was gonna come out this year, so, uh, not surprising. A lot of games are getting delayed into next year. It's, uh, pretty wild. Um. Yeah, not, not surprising. Not surprising. Uh, something that was uh, surprising... One of the creepiest fucking games I've ever seen. <laughs> we got fucking Scorn. Which... Yeah. I, got, I have the heebie-jeebies just fucking talking about it right now. <laughs> like, it is one of the creepiest... It's, like, up there with, like, modern Doom. But more creepy than modern Doom. <laughs> yeah, this definitely would have fit in with the uh, PlayStation Showcase since we got a lot of horror from there. Well, no, this would have fit with Summer Game Fest more. <laughs> That's what I meant to say, the Summer Games Fest. Uh, yeah. is, uh, there's this crazy amount of horror we got from there. We didn't have too much horror games. We did have a lot of shooters, yeah. just in general. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, I mean, I don't think that's anywhere near as bad as uh, them all. At Summer least they mostly weren't clumped together. But yeah, Scorn is yeah. It's actually coming out during the Halloween season, so if you want to be scared shitless... uh. Scorn is a is the game for you. Then. So uh, we're getting a new action strategy game from the people at Mojang called Minecraft Legends. Yeah, yeah, a, a more kind of reminds me of like a Civ game, actually. Uh, well, 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 we're well, we're not going to talk about it here, but we did get an announcement of a Civ like a more like quote unquote Civ like game. Yeah, but. A more single-player focused Minecraft game, which is interesting because ob mine obviously Minecraft, one of the most popular multiplayer games in the world. Minecraft Dungeons was like a co-op dungeon crawler, but we're getting a, a single-player Minecraft game, and it didn't look too bad from, from the trailers we saw. It looked pretty good. Yeah. From the little we saw of it, but... <laughs> yeah, it's coming, to of course, 2023. And remember, you can you can play it day one on Game Pass. 
That was after every trailer. I want to comment on that really quick. After every trailer, there was, oh yeah, play it day one on Game Pass. <laughs> Honestly, day, uh, everybody who's getting Game Pass just keeps winning. At the Game, Pass, <laughs> Game Pass is eaten. Uh, yeah, Game Pass subscrib- subscribers are eaten. We got, we got the announcement for a survival craft game called Light Frontier, which will be coming in the spring of 2023. It's like, eh. It looked cool. Looked cool. But speaking of things looking cool, we got the last case of Benedict Fox, which looks to be a horror mystery Metroidvania. Oh, yeah. So, uh, kind of a gothic art style Metroidvania game. Um, Looked really cool. But, you know, delving inside the consciousness of like a dead person with supernatural abilities seems pretty cool. Yeah, and, um, it's, uh, and it's coming in the spring. <laughs> it's coming in the spring. Spring 2023. Again, 2023. Keep that in mind. 2023. That's a big that's a big year. <laughs> we got, so they introduced the uh, final class for Diablo 4, which the, is a game a lot of people are excited for. It's the uh, Necromancer class. Yep, they... Um, yeah, uh, Diablo is going to have the Necromancer class. It's going to have an open and shared world. That is correct. And uh, there's going to be cross-play and cross-progression on all platforms. That's, so that's, that's huge. Cool. That is, that's huge. That is the, that's great news, honestly. Oh, yeah. Because it's about fucking time. <laughs> about time a lot of these, like, more multiplayer games embraced the cross-play, cross-progression, though that might mean you might have to make 70 million accounts, but... <laughs> but it might, it might be worth it. It might be worth it. So what do we get? What do we get next? What do you got next for us, Slade? Well, outside of that, I mean, just a lot of games that they announced in general. Um... The Ravenlock trailer looked pretty interesting from what I could see. Yes, it did. It it, it kind of looked like, in, in some aspects, it looked like Minecraft, which we just talked about a few moments ago. Yeah. But it also kind of looked like Alice in Wonderland. That was the impression I definitely got from it. More Alice in Wonderland than anything else. Yeah, it's a more like, ac- it's an action-adventure adventure game and stuff. But, but Slade, we have... Four, the four biggest announcements, though. We got a lot of other, other smaller stuff. Grounded finally got its, like, day one. Like, it's finally out, Grounded. That, that, uh, that game where you're a kid trying yeah. to survive in the garden. That got, that got stuff. Uh, sea of Thieves finally got its captain update where you can apparently name your ship as long as it's not profane. But fucking Persona is coming to Xbox, Slade. This is not yes. a drill. Xbox Persona's coming to Xbox. Well, not just Xbox, but also PC, which is uh, yeah. absolutely fantastic. And you're also getting the definitive version of all three games. You're getting Persona 3 uh, Portable, Portable, which was the PSP version of the game. You're getting uh, Persona 4 Golden, which is already on Steam. Yes. But now it's also coming to Xbox, which is great. And yep. then you're also getting Persona 5 Royal. Yeah. Now, this might be a dumb question as someone who has the most basic knowledge of Persona. Is, is Persona 3 Portable the definitive version, or is that FES? Uh, you might be right. It's probably FES. I wasn't thinking. Yeah, but... But yeah, but definitely like, for Golden and Royal, they are the definitive. Yeah, those are the definitive games. editions. Yeah, which yeah, and uh, we actually have a release date for one of them, Persona Five Royal, uh, that is coming, I believe, in October of this year. So we're get <laughs> Xbox has games this year. <laughs> oh yeah, and apparently they're adding one game to Game Pass every month for the next twelve months. At the bare minimum, which is yeah, pretty insane. Not gonna lie, that is absolutely insane. Yeah. So, so for 
Xbox people, that means you're going to get three Persona RPGs within the next year, which is insane. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kojima-san is here. Kojima announced, yes, I'm working with, with Xbox Game Studios on a game. And uh, on the Xbox Twitter account, they revealed this was going to, quote, uh, use the power of the cloud. Which could mean one of several different things. Yeah, so this could be something that is played exclusively on a cloud service. Um, I don't know if this means that there's a unique like style of gimmick or mechanic that he could use to kind of leverage the cloud in his words. Yeah. Um, I don't know, it's Hideo Kojima. He, he, he makes some pretty wacky shit. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Look at Death Stranding. Oh yeah. So uh, for people who were excited to see new ideas innovated, he is uh, definitely your guy, and I think Microsoft is very happy to have him. Yep. And uh, of course, the last thing they ended on Starfield. Of course, we got yeah, so we got Starfield. a whole bunch of new details about Starfield, didn't we? First of all, was finally getting a gameplay reveal. And looks like every modern day Bethesda game plus a little bit of No Man's Sky. <laughs> yeah. It looks like No Man's Sky had a baby with uh Skyrim. Skyrim. But also a shooter. Yeah. Well what well, Fallout, kind of, I guess. A well little bit. yeah, but if Fallout played and looked a lot more smooth than it usually does. <laughs> Damn. I don't know if that was meant to be a roast. <laughs> uh, not particularly. I mean, it, it, it's Fallout. We, we, we both love and hate it. it. It's just that type of series. Yep. Uh, apparently this will have the, quote, most flexible Bethesda character creator. It will have a... Sh it'll have ship building. It'll have base building. So, so your usual... Your usual. Yeah, so on the topic of the custom creator, that's not a high... Uh, bar for them to get over yeah <laughs> <laughs> True. But that's, that's custom customization has been pretty limited but who knows their partnership with microsoft has probably changed a lot for them well it doesn't seem like the engines changed <laughs> probably not but i think at that point the partnership with microsoft maybe will get them past their whole you know it's but it's bugs our future kind of Thing that we used to consider a char, but now we just consider them bad. Yeah, and the fact there, <laughs> yeah, and the fact there's going to be like a like I think like a hundred plus planets or something like that. I could see the bugs just flying around me right now. <laughs> no, there'll be over a thousand planets. A th oh, a thousand planets! I, and I a miss cluster of over one hundred solar systems. Oh, hundred solar systems. Oh my, yeah, I could, I could see the bugs literally flying right now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, Sl but yeah, Starfield's 2023, the game of the year conversation for 2023 is, uh, it's getting bigger and bigger by the day. <laughs> yeah, it's actually absurd. Yeah, and then, uh, we got a huge calendar. Uh, of all the games coming in 2022 and 2023. and uh... But yeah, what do you think of the show overall? Things that were announced, things that weren't announced. We could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so uh, things that were announced. Let's focus on that. Yes. Um, I think this was an amazing showcase. Hands it down, it was 10 out of 10. I think... Uh... We got a lot of games and gameplays. We didn't have developers feeling themselves for 20 plus minutes. Well, well, Todd Howard, one. but... Yeah, Todd Howard was the only one, and I can live with that. Yep. Um, Hollow Knight, Silk Song. Yep. Finally, after <laughs> all this time, it's still alive. Silk Song is alive, ladies and gentlemen. No Silk official Song. announcement or anything or tweet or video or got not even a tweet since 2019 so here we are <laughs> yeah here here we are the hype hasn't died for that game the hype has yeah. not died 
Um, but even outside of that, it's good to finally see some gameplay for Starfield because it was one of those things where a lot of people were excited. But I'm like, you're all getting hyped over a logo. We haven't seen Jack shit. Well, yet. a logo and an idea. And an idea, yeah. And so it it looks like it's coming that. along decently well. Well, outside of that, they also had a plethora of like really good announcements. The uh, we talked a little bit about the right one that's actually really huge yeah, in terms riot, of value. riot games uh the um, the funny horizon or no the funny forza dlc yeah and uh wheels. honestly the microphone soft flight simulator thing with the halo vehicles is actually cool as hell as well yeah absolutely and a lot of little like smaller game announcements uh the benedict fox game uh oh ravenlock and a yeah, bunch was, of other smaller Yeah, items. there's definitely a lot to love here, for sure. Yeah. And, and the fact that all of this will be out by June of next year, crazy. So th yeah, that's crazy right. Insane. Starfield is going to be a first half of the year game. Which like, is absolutely crazy. That's nuts. But, but there were a few things that should have been here that I thought would be here. Halo Infinite. I thought we'd get something other than, hey, you can fly a vehicle. I thought we'd actually get something on Halo. A little surprised we didn't. But, uh, but I guess, uh, <laughs> Slade, maybe you can attest to this. Halo, Halo isn't exactly in the greatest state right now, is it? Oh, yeah. It's, uh, to put it lightly, kind of in tatters because of the disastrous release of Halo Infinite. Honestly, it feels like everything at Microsoft is going well, with the exception of Halo. And it's just sad to see. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, like, there were rumors, like there is every fucking year. Rumors of Banjo. And I'm like, can you people stop at this point? Banjo's dead in the ground. He's dead and buried. I hate saying that as a Banjo fan, but I'm like, Banjo's dead. Microsoft does not care about platformers. You know, speaking of bad rumors, there's still a rumor going on that there's going to be a Nintendo Direct by the end of the month, and Banjo's actually going to be there instead. I'm, I'm pressing, I'm pressing the biggest X button to doubt on that. Give me Xbox, send me a giant X button, and I will press it live on camera. Oh. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, people are like, oh, where are the games you announced, like, fucking five years ago? <laughs> Three to three to five years ago, <laughs> yeah. Because th that is the one thing that I guess you could take away from this was that there weren't a lot of first party stuff. No, mostly third party stuff. But honestly, that's still fantastic either way. Just getting news about games and games coming out. Yeah, and I actually the next year. Yeah, and honestly, if. This was going to be Microsoft's, like, presentation strategy going forward, only showing games that are coming out within the next 12 months. I'd be happy about that. Uh, the reason... Okay, that, I would be happy about that as well. But it's not a sustainable strategy. This only works when you have a large contingent of games coming out with a time frame. And games kind of ebb and flow. <laughs> in terms of release dates. That, that's true. Project look look at this year. Look at all the news we've covered this year. <laughs> like... 90% yeah. of them were games getting delayed. So... <laughs> that, that or stuff like fucking fuzzy controls. But, but yeah, overall, though, uh, besides maybe a few bits of pacing issue here and there, like the Diablo segment didn't need to be that long. Yeah. And a, and a few other segments, but may, maybe the stuff segment could have been just a little shorter but other than that, i thought i thought it was a fine presentation if i had to give it a letter grade probably like a, a b there wasn't anything like holy oh well maybe silk song coming back to life <laughs> that was like yeah i think that was probably the biggest announcement but i think starfield and persona were not very far persona was it. also i would say wow but like nothing like really first party Wow! Like holy shit! But yeah, but but I still. Well, I mean, Starfield's technically first party now. 
So what? Well, true, true, but no big new first party. Holy shits! But yeah. I, I still enjoyed this presentation. I, I, if I had to give it a letter grade, I'd give it a B. It was, it was very good. I think because when we were praising this as like it's a really good like showcase, probably one of the best we've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Typically, we just have not seen very good showcases in general. When it, out of uh, either Xbox or uh, PlayStation, for that matter. I feel like... And not, well, not well trying Sony to be typically do, fan, like, their but... state of plays, which, except yeah. this last one, generally yeah. you, you go in with low expectations. Their showcases are where they they have the bangers. Yeah, but uh, Sony hit on their uh, state of play. I gave that, like, an A-. minus. Mm-hmm. I would say this was a solid B+. Plus. Yeah. It was definitely really good. Yeah, it was I think uh, we see more stuff like this out of Microsoft and Sony. Then Nintendo's going to have to ultimately step up their game because the directs have not been hitting for a while. So, overall, fantastic showcase. Yeah. Was, just was fun. an exciting time to be a gamer. Uh, well, it's an exciting time to uh, play it day one on Game Pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Game Pass subscribers still eating. Yeah, get, yeah. If like the one thing this showcase taught me, game Game Pass is still an insane value, and they could price increase it to ten bucks, and it's still a per month, and it'd still be insane value. Yeah, it's actually it's actually absurd, like the value you get out of Game Pass at this point. It's almost like they put nearly everything on Game Pass. Why would you even buy video games anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Their uh, whole idea about becoming the Netflix of gaming. I'm actually at first I thought it was absurd, but now I'm actually kind of starting to. Yeah, believe we're it. we're seeing the fruits of of that labor come come to fruition. I just want to know how much money Microsoft has because they're throwing the bag. They have to be throwing the bag at literally everybody. <laughs> they have actually, to. Crazy. especially in regards to the riot stuff. Oh yeah. This. But anyways, this has been Slade, and this has been Byron. We will. Well, we will see you all probably on Sunday for wrapping up like what whatever else happened with gaming th- during the week. Hope you all have a good day. good night and goodbye.